Welcome to the Yellow Jackets Hive, presented by CordCutting.com. I'm Media Melanie, here with... And I'm Emily. And we have a very special exclusive cord cutting video today. We are interviewing who you may know as Dead Hunter Guy, Cabin Daddy, the skeleton in the attic from <laughs> Yellow Jackets Season 1. So let's bring him on. Welcome to William Vaughn. We'll call you Will. Thanks for being here. I'm thrilled. I put all my skin on just to be on this show. <laughs> I really decided to turn out uh, for for the for the hive. So and I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you very very much for having me. It's uh, it's an honor. It really is. It's always oh. a pleasure. Yes, our pleasure. And uh, like what you did there, Cabin Daddy just wants his house back. I mean, <laughs> I want my house back. I mean, come on, I did nothing wrong. You did, you didn't, and you've lost your home. They burned your cabin down to the ground. How disrespectful, right? Well, they, I mean, one of them. Somebody. Specifically. Or yeah, it. and if you had his druthers, there'd be more skeletons in that cabin, perhaps. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so do, do you think Coach Ben was actually the one that burned it down, or do you think there were some other forces at play? I think Coach Ben 100% was the one to burn it down. Absolutely. He was looking at matches right outside, wasn't he? Right before he had like a little book of matches. He's like, um, or, or, and maybe they left it a bit, bit ambiguous. It's, it was a bit of an ambiguous season. A lot of yes. uh, unreliable narrators and a lot of what? Oh, hallucinations that, too, right? Hallucinations, which is completely understandable for these poor kids uh, out in their, uh, you know, <laughs> Being out on a soundstage for an entire season out there <laughs> in, in, uh, in almost in, in Burnaby, the Bridge Studio. I think they're still at Bridge Studios. Um, yeah. So I just, yeah, I was, I was, I had a, a couple things spoiled for me throughout the season because I wasn't able to quite catch up with it. Uh, I didn't know that happened. And I was shocked, quite frankly. And it was, a, to me, a great writing choice to be like, look, we spent the entire season at this cabin. You ain't going to see that cabin ever again, folks. Okay. Yeah. Enjoy it while you had it. Cause it's gone forever. That's now, right. these kids are, now these kids can't even like, what are they going to do tonight to, to survive? Uh, and when you were filming, it was actually the cabin in the woods. You were not on a soundstage or was it the soundstage by that point? No, this was a cabin in the woods. This was out in um, a place called Panther paintball in like South Surrey. So almost at the U S border from where we are in, uh, in Vancouver. And, uh, yeah, they just built the cabin in the woods. Uh, they had the full exterior. They shot all the exterior there. Wait, no, interior there as well. Sorry, I get my, my mixed words up. Um, and, uh, yeah, we just had, like, they recreated the cabin fully in the, um, in, 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 the, in the second season. So when uh, Akila finds uh, <laughs> Nugget, uh, <laughs> poor little mouse, in that, like, cubby, that's where I like, that's like the little food pantry. It's got like the um, ladder that goes upstairs. Yeah. So that was like, that was like my little room I was hiding in. And I was <laughs> yes, that's yeah, the there right it is. There, right there. Right? Yeah. That's so, right. so right behind me. Yeah. That, that's like their, their pa quote unquote pantry. And it was, uh, the set deck was uh, really nice. It was full of all sorts of old crappy stuff there. Um, but they, you know, from what I saw on the show uh, in season two, they recreated the cabin fully. I don't know if they, uh, disassembled it and then brought it back and put it up piece by piece. I'm not sure, but you watch the second season and it makes perfect sense why they would do that. Cause they got to be outside in the snow the entire time. They got to yeah. CG the, um, the breath coming out of them. Cause they're on the soundstage for our, for most of all of that stuff. I think there might be some stuff with Nat and Travis when they're like yeah. traipsing yes. through the mountains. Yeah. You guys mm -hmm. might know yes. that, um, that was shot probably. Yeah. Out, out here up in the, up in the mountains somewhere uh it looked quite breathtaking um but yeah that's it, it, it and now they don't have to worry about the cabin on the soundstage anymore because like we said it's gone spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't watched episode nine yet <laughs> oh hopefully all of you have watched i think everyone's watching right hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah. yes definitely. is there a standing spoiler warning on this show i mean we already went all the way so <laughs> no we're good we can spoil away we have yeah no okay okay spoilers. totally right, fine. yeah because we all know the same information i know nothing uh beyond what <laughs> is, what aired in the episodes right Right, right, definitely. Yeah. So let's back it up and yeah. talk a little bit about your initial casting process. What was that experience like, the timing? Was it while they were still filming? Was it in the middle? How did all that work? Walk us through it. It was the, the most standard casting uh, process you could ask for. The uh, now Emmy-nominated um, casting directors. Yes, uh, yes yeah, congratulations to, to Corinne and, and, uh, and Jen. 
for being nominated along with the uh, the American casting directors who uh, did an excellent job. Um, they it, it's like anything. The agency sees a breakdown of an episode. They see a, some dude in his 30s. They're like, well, Will could probably be that. Uh, so we'll uh, submit Will for this. And they, they see my headshot and resume. And they might remember me from seeing me in the past or booking me in the past. Um, but they'll they'll see an audition on tape. And it's um, it's one that I think I got rid of. I don't know why I did it, but it was such a simple audition. So I get the 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 email. The emails that the actors get just say like, hey, you got a self-tape for this show. And it's due like Tuesday at 10 a.m. And you're like, okay. okay, great. And it gives you the breakdown. It's like, here's the role. Here's kind of the, the pay scale you'll have. Blah, blah, blah. All, all this information. Mostly, I think, for legal reasons. I'm not sure. Uh, but then right. it, it breakdowns of the roles. It's like, um, actually, let me let me see if I can pull up the email here, what it says. Because the breakdowns are done by the casting directors. The casting directors read the script. And um, they... Uh, we'll uh, write a breakdown on that. They say like, okay, so we need, we need, you know, we need this guy. Here we go. Uh, Yellow Jackets, Hi, William. Yellow Jackets, due Friday, September 10th at uh, 12 p.m. Right. Uh, Olaf Hunter, uh, Yellow Jackets, number 110. Uh, and uh, for this, they cast the uh, two nurses. Uh, nurse was stripping the bed of a deceased patient. Yeah, okay. They're, they're in the nursing home stripping, um, what's your name's bed? Uh right. Yeah, we have Deb, we have newscaster number one, newscaster number two, reporter, uh, and then a woman, and uh, Hunter, male, mid-30s. Any ethnicities? He he is disheveled with a scraggly beard, but underneath still has, a, has, has his boyish charm. His presence is eerie and quite frightening. Actor role. <laughs> um, and uh, this is the storyline they sent us as well. They have a little blurb about it. And this is why I was like, I didn't quite get the show. In 1994, the Whiskeyock High School Yellow Jackets girls soccer team in New Jersey is headed for the Nationals when their chartered plane crashes in the desolate area in the woods. Remember, it says 1994 there, right? They, uh, and they fast forward to 2019. So obviously, this is when they shot the pilot. The, pilot, the survivors of the crash are haunted by what they experienced and what they did to survive. So I read that and I say like, oh, a girls uh, soccer team crashes in the in the woods and they survive. So I'm th I don't know if this is like a free form show or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, where right. it's like lucky young girls like, come on, girls, we can do this. You know, and they fight a bear with a stick and they're like, we did it. You know, and they come out and like, oh, well. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no like basis for comparison. I, I, I maybe I try to look up Ashley Lyle and Bart Nickerson, but I saw nothing like. I mean, look, nothing could prepare me for what it ended up being. Uh, so this, I just, usually I take with my girlfriend, you know, we read opposite each other. She's an actor as well. So, you know, during the, the self-tape era, which we're in and will be in forever, we read with each other. Uh, but this is like, she was at work this night and I was just like, hey, you know what, honey, I can do it myself. And I just set up the camera because <laughs> all, all the, all the role is, is just, so sometimes they redact things from uh, sides oh. as well. So uh, I can read you the whole script. Uh, this says interior cabin attic morning, 1996 standing in the shadows of the corner, watching her. Uh, so first of all, they don't even give me a full sentence. They just give me half of the sentence they had. <laughs> it's hard wow. to tell, but he looks to be in his mid thirties with a face that despite the filthy beard has a certain boyish boyish quality. Uh, wow. So that's the filthy beard. That was like, I grew that as soon as, they were like, you're hired. Like that was maybe five days worth of growth. All right. All like, right. This is like two it's weeks. Pretty solid. Takes me a while. Takes me a while. Yeah. <laughs> That's a certain boyish quality. And here we go, Hunter. We're so glad you're joining us. We've been waiting for you. As Jackie suddenly goes pale with fear, fear ellipsis. And that's all I have. I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, she, she, right, uh, she I, I, we did a, a blocking. We did a rehearsal for that. And uh, I, I spooked everyone uh, when I kind of came from behind and, and gave that line. And Jackie just looks at me. He's like, so fucking creepy. Uh, <laughs> this very, yeah, Ella. She was great. Yeah. Yes. All, the, all, the, all the actors were just tremendous. And I'm glad I didn't know who they were and what they were capable of at the time. I probably would have fanboyed out too much. And it's, it's not always <laughs> right. good as an, you know, it's like not always good as an actor to know too much about the people you're working with. No, too much. But you know, but like, I, I was happy they were just like, yeah, they're all here. And we all, you know, sat in the, cause this is, I mean, most of their scenes are with, with all of them. So this is like a big group scene, right? They're not super common uh, cause usually they pair off and they go off to, so I had the whole group of them there and, you know, I kind of buddied up with uh, Kevin Alves. He was really cool and Liv nice. was super, super nice. And Sammy was super, super nice. And um, yeah, it was just a great experience, but this is like, 
so I, I, I shot this audition. I did like three or four takes. I think the take I sent them, I was like, oh, I think I went like too far with that one, but I don't, I don't send it. Send it anyway. Most of my auditions end with me being like, man, eh, it's good enough. And, and send it off because you can't, because <laughs> you don't know, right? You can't like fine tune it too much or overthink it or anything. You're just like, you know what? This is what I think. They're going right. to have it. And, and the, again, it's one of those rules too. It's a scraggly beard, right? You think like, cr- cr- you think maybe a beard, like a ZZ Top beard or something. Like you think something really, yeah. and I was perfectly clean shaven in, in my audition. And, you know, and I just, t- and like actually so much of our conversations on set were just about taping and auditioning for stuff because the season was coming to an end. So all these people were available to to do yeah. stuff. And I think Sophie worked on a movie that summer and, yeah. Um, Jasmine uh, was probably working on Scream maybe at that point. Jazz too. Working, yeah. Sophie Thatcher was working on Book of Boba Fett or maybe she shot that before. Regardless, these these girls are all very busy and deserve to be so. Obviously, they're tremendous. Um, but yeah, I remember showing Kevin. I was like, man, dude, like this is crazy. I'm like on set here because like this is all I did, man. And it's like a two <laughs> second thing. And that goes back to the point. Of there's no no small actors, no small roles, only small actors. Right. Right. Because yes. this little two second thing got me this show and got me to be part of this great experience with this great fan community and also got me to be uh, uh, talking here with you, which is, uh, again, yes. a tremendous honor. So so it's great. But this is like so and again, like as as actors, too, you're like, oh, it's one line. OK, let's just do how much time does it do? Like, I'll just do it right now. You know, and then sometimes you get seven, eight pages. You know, oh, wow. And, and you never hear back from those. But like this one was just like sure shoot it off and then you know lo and behold here we are yeah Um, you must have nailed it i mean and one other thing you got out of it was a great nickname cabin daddy the fandom of course named you that and i mean do you love the nickname or what it's hilarious it's so internet to me (laughs) you know anything daddy or uh, i don't know uh (laughs) you know it's it's giving cabin daddy i'm sure they'd say on uh on twitter or threads whatever you use right now so yeah Yeah. cabin daddy's very funny (laughs) so it is is it just says hunter and i think uh, even in like the the actual script or something it said trapper or something like that there you know hunter trapper guy the the most English guy they could possibly find doesn't speak a lick of French or you know could if you I I was I was coached or something but that that I thought was interesting too right they have this kind of French spirit that moves through them speaks through them yeah. um you know it wants blood golly um and then they hire me to do it and uh yeah um it, it, and and as far as like coming back or anything I mean I don't know they 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 could do anything like I said my home is gone so I've Right. Yes, your back. home is like, gone. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Mention that one word though. They did reach out to you about season two though, right? Well, not in the way you think. I didn't hear Ooh. anything about uh anything related to Cabin uh Daddy. Uh I don't think the creators would reach out and say that. Hey Cabin Daddy, are you available? <laughs> what it was was that it was an audition for a different part. They were casting season two, and this was um uh, uh let me see if i can find it uh where is it, 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 it yellow jacket season here oh, so golly. they didn't realize that you were oh, in yep. season one when they sent you this or do no, you th- think they did and just were looking for a different role for you or what what are your thoughts on that this is a this is a not this is actually a common kind of mistake. There have been shows that have shot up here that uh, like I think of Smallville, which went ten seasons, and Supernatural, which went a thousand. Um, <laughs> that they like Supernatural, I've got to do two times because every five years they're like, yeah, if you're on it five years ago, you can do it again. Like they just kind of made up this wow. rule because they just like they they have so many episodes and so many characters per episode. Yeah. There's only so many actors in Vancouver, so they're like, all right, right. you can come do it again. So this isn't an uncommon thing. It's actually, it does say, usually, um, in these uh, audition requests that they send, it says, please ensure your uh, client has not been in the show before, basically. It's like, please ensure the client has not been on this episode. Um, you know, because I've gotten, like, I did Good, Good Doctor in season one, and I've gotten yeah. emails for, for Good Doctor auditions. And I'm just kind of, and it's kind of nice actually because i'm like i don't have to do this because i've already been on the show uh so i just send that email i'm just like sorry i've been on the show and then if they fire back with they don't care they still want you to tape it absolutely fine yeah so so this part and i'm so glad i got to see the the show because now i understand what this part was and it didn't change very much from the sides that they sent me but 
what this was, this they sent me this in November, just this past November, 2022, Yellow Jacket self-tape, uh, for Acolyte Todd. You remember Todd with the goat, gives the goat yes. to Shauna. Shauna thinks she has to kill the goat. Uh, yes. And she doesn't have to kill the goat. Um, so that's Acolyte Todd. And uh, yeah, they sent me this. Uh, like, And the, you know, again, my agency is just looking to give me jobs. So that it's right. like, Hey, this guy's th- Acolyte Todd is described as this in this in this email. Acolyte Todd, male thirties, pale, tall, and humorless. He helps a new <laughs> acolyte with their initial treatment plan. Please suggest actors who are comfortable with livestock because he's got a whole <laughs> very specific, very specific. It's very it's very specific. Oh wow! And this is also okay. I'm allowed to say this, I guess. Veteran yeah. stage performer, fifties to sixties. This is this this is episode uh, which episode two hundred eight. Veteran okay. stage performer, fifties sixties. This veteran performer dressed in a giant animal costume performs <laughs> a song and dance number before bestowing some worldly worldly advice. Please suggest actors who are accomplished singers and dancers. One day guest star. Yeah, they nailed that. Wow. Yes, yeah. they did. They wow, sure that's did. hilarious. And that, that's and honestly, that might have been how he got it as well. It, it may have been an offer because he's he's a bit of a name, right? But yeah. they also could have just sent out an audition and just like, hey, do this, you know, have this conversation with uh, with Misty as uh, as uh, Caligula. Uh, and they also update the storyline in this email. They update the dates from 1996 uh, and and to 2021. But yes, my agencies just try to get me jobs. They just say, oh, 30s pale, whatever, great. He can, he can do that. And then if the cast directors want to see it, then they say, yes, we'll see Will. And then that's when the self-tape request comes in. And the agency's just like, hey, can you tape this? And now all you got to do is say yes. Or you say no, because I've already been on the show. And then they're like, okay. And then that's it. That's <laughs> as simple as it is. But like, you know, it's it's nothing personal. It's not like, you know, like they might not know uh, that it was. And, and honestly, I mean, maybe it, it could have worked out if, if they were cool with it. If they were like, well, yes, we saw that uh, you were in the show, but uh, you know, you just had like a little thing. We, we And you were, you know, must up. You were all uh, dirty. The director, Eduardo, <laughs> kept like putting makeup on. He's like, he's too handsome. You got to like uh, messy him up more and more. It's like, okay. Very oh, flattering. That's funny. And you sent us some behind the scenes photos, that's, some nice yes, trailer yes. selfies. And this really gives us a good look at your complete ensemble here. From it's, beanie it's, to flannel to layers, it's over complete because they got rid of the beanie. Uh, the beanie was a big debate. If you, you know, we saw the frame you had up earlier. No beanie, yeah, no beanie, yeah, no beanie. And I'm way dirtier in that. Like they kind of see they took down like the 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 neck and uh, yeah. So no beanie, and they really that might have even been before I went to hair and makeup. <laughs> yeah. So there's me, Love that um, with the beanie. not even yeah, with the beanie on still, and that's me with it off. But I don't think I have even that much makeup. Like they really like color in the beard, and they really, um, they really dirty them up and 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 ugly them up uh, there. And they also, I'm gonna mention this too. They did a really cool effect inside the camera where they had like it was basically a lens that had like glass in half of it, and literally the camera comes up to me, and a guy just rotates this lens in front of the camera it's like an in lens effect that's why it's so like distorted and weird when you're yeah. seeing it pushing in on me um i just thought that was really a really cool piece of um filmmaking right there yeah that's yeah, very cool sure. and yeah. uh we should note you look really great here too by the way thank you so much you know uh i did the i was keto for a while and uh once i got past yeah. the keto flu I was, I was feeling good yeah yeah thank you very much i mean it, it really it really worked for you wow you really got all the uh extra extra body fat off there so yeah right. that's right i supplied the spider webs myself i have a pet yes so it's been speculated that Jason Ritter, of course, Melanie Linsky's husband, may be taking over the role of Cabin Daddy. We're not sure yet. We know there's going to be a bonus episode. Yeah. But what are your thoughts on that? Is it flattering or are you more disappointed that, you know, they didn't bring you back for it? Or, I mean, what are, what are your sentiments about it? You know, honestly, it is a mix. Uh, b- but because what what did i say earlier like this audition i did was based on like those two lines so yeah. whatever the backstory of cabin daddy is he's doing something that requires more than those just those two lines so yes. if 
you know, it's entirely possible they put out a, a search for another cabin daddy. Like my agency is not really like on the lookout for this kind of thing. So it's quite possible they did that. Um, but I don't know. That's pure speculation. It's incredibly flattering. Jason's a very accomplished actor. And, uh, you know, if, if they do give a, an episode to give him a, a backstory, it's uh, it is nice to see that. Cause it, also, I think the audience is looking for some answers um, yes, as, as we are. keep going we you know i want to know about that man yeah <laughs> and like the eyeless man who they they actually recast yes. for the second season as well yeah. that's the part that freaked me out the most yeah in the first season for <laughs> sure uh and, and they've actually they've done some other uh recasting they recast uh, akila and yeah. they recast um well and they added some some uh jackets the yes they sure did they added some jackets yeah uh in um in in this uh, season, they had a poor Crystal. Oh, <laughs> poor Crystal! Oh, Chris, she kicked the bucket Kristen. way too early. Kristen, yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. right. Hey, yeah. Girl. Speaking of jackets, we see this jacket that we surmise belonged to you at some point. Was it ever discussed with wardrobe that you would be wearing that jacket, or was that just never even brought up at all? That was, I don't think that was brought up. Unfortunately, one of the the wardrobe person that I worked with, he unfortunately he passed. Um, oh, since since yeah, since we did the show, uh, I'm so sad his name escapes me. Uh, but they threw on like this. Um, uh, maybe that jacket was there. He wasn't going to be like super like winterized. He was just kind of going to be in. Um, Cause you're those, indoors. Like, of course I'm indoors. He's got those like kind of canvas pants on and I got that, that gray. Uh, it's like a gray full body. Like, yeah, you can kind of see it's uh, under the, under the flannel there. Yeah. Gray. So that's like a full body. Um, I guess it's all long underwear, but it's like wool. It's extremely uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, so it's like the wool thing and I have like that piece, just like some layers and, and just he's just supposed to. And it's all like tattered as well. They ripped it up and kind of scorched it up to make it look sooty and, and kind of nasty. And maybe that jacket was was tried on. I'm not sure. But uh, what I'm wearing is pretty much what I expected after we did the right. costume fitting. OK. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, but that's a good detail. I never noticed that jacket before because they wouldn't yeah, have had it see, multiple times. They, they wouldn't have had it on the plane. Characters. No, they no. wouldn't have had it on the plane. We we think yeah. it was hung up in the cabin. So it would seem like it was there. And then it kind of rotates around like the co-ed naked shirt and all of their other clothing, really. So that's right. Yeah. And they share it. And uh, who was it they right. didn't want to take the clothes off of? It was Jackie. Jackie. Right? Yeah, yeah. They did not want to remove her clothes, which I I think that was, you know, a miss given how they warm that varsity jacket, jacket is, especially. Yeah. Yeah. The varsity the jacket. jackets, yeah, it, it was nice. I, I think, yeah, I don't know. Then we get a whole thing about burials, and does it matter if you're buried in? Cl- I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the, it, honestly, like it, it, dead of winter, take all the clothing you can. They took it all off of Javi, yeah. you know. So yeah, take, they, take it off point. Jackie as well. Yeah, yeah, they stripped him, and he had a family member there. So you think that maybe Travis would have stopped them from doing that, but we guess not. So yeah, Travis was feeling some kind of way. He sure was. Yes. Yeah. What did you think about season two as a whole from a viewer perspective? Uh, we know you recently finished it. What were your I thoughts did, yes. in comparison to season one and just in general? Yeah, I thought it was cool. Uh, I thought it was cool. I, um, y- yeah, we, we, we kind of touched on like the unreliable narrator aspect of it, uh, before and, um, you know, there's also the, the possibility of, well, should we have gotten the adult girls together quicker uh, and give them more yes. time? Because those were th- those moments were just so enjoyable to have them all together and to have like kind of Shauna and the Sadekis out doing their own thing for like maybe the first half or two thirds of the season. And then Shauna finally, mm-hmm. and they all kind of right. show up pretty quickly. Uh, it, it, it's odd to me too, that they chose to do nine episodes and then a, bonus one for some reason i'm not sure why right instead of 10 because i mean you look at all the things that are affecting productions as we speak right now and and in the past covid interrupt interrupted the show i'm guessing because they shot the pilot in like what 2018 19 out there Mm -hmm. you know in la and they came to vancouver to shoot it and they shot it like yeah they shot it 2021 so they were still like we're still in pandemic but they had like all the safety precautions, like in one of my pictures, you can see my mask hanging around my face. Right. You know, so uh, 
and, and now you can't make a show because the writers are on strike. Today, the actors are on strike. <sighs> All these things that are just out of your hands that you have no control over, really, just trying to make a show. So it's it's interesting that they chose to do just the nine episodes because I think the end of it feels a little rushed, pardon yes. me, with our adults, Absolutely. especially, and um, with the kids. Uh, there, there's definitely more to... I don't know more to have done there, but like it, there are some interesting and and it went some interesting ways I didn't expect. I did not expect there to be an underground, uh, like mine tunnel or or something, you know. So that was that was pretty cool. And like Javi survives, kind of. Um, (laughs) uh, so yeah, it was it was it was also less scary than the first season. Like the first season I watched with my girlfriend, she's like, I don't think I can watch another season. That's too scary. I was like, okay, I'll watch it then. And uh, it wasn't as scary as, as the first one. It was like intense, but not like as like supernaturally frightening. Not as ghosty, I guess. Dark, but not as scary. Yeah. Dark, but not as scary. Yeah. That's a really good way to put it. So um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I do like that. They, you know, I shouldn't say this, but I do like that. They destroyed the cabin and like that really (laughs) ratchets up the heat. No pun intended on our young girls who we know some will survive and some won't. And, you know, we still have the question of who will be the antler queen or if that's a title that gets passed around. We saw a bit of a ceremony there. Uh Um, And pit girl who the fuck pit pit girl. girl, Like we really like to know. Yeah. People are thinking uh, Mari, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. Or Jen. Or Jen. Yeah. Because Mari might also be like a bit of a red herring, right? The the way she yeah. acts, you you just like, oh, throw her in the pit. But you're also like, maybe because the show's good at sub- kind of subverting those expectations. Um, you know, I'm still I waiting think- for Mari to show up in the adult timeline. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I don't either. If she's well, not pit girl, then I think she will be in the adult timeline. She, I feel the same. She absolutely should, and and what a boon for for her that would be because she's one of our local actors. Um, oh yeah, that's Mari. Right. Um, and hopefully they get to her a little faster than they than they got to yeah Van and the and the in it the took next. Took so season. many episodes to get to Van. So and many. She, and Lauren Ambrose was so good yeah. uh, in that part that it was like oh yeah we need we need some more of that. We should have had some more of that. Uh, so hopefully Lauren kind of through her performance, much like Liv did with her performance where they wanted to kill Liv off in the show, but Liv's acting was so good. They were like, Oh, you gotta keep her around. And now we gotta make sure we gotta actually go even further and say that she will not die. Uh, and that, that she will be alive uh, in the future with this cancer that might go into might remission. Like Maybe. it might go away because of what they did. The wilderness recognizes, you know, that sacrifice. Um, so, uh, yeah, the cult was, uh, was cool. It was, it was all right. Some interesting stuff there with, with Lottie and like hallucinating a therapist. And, um, (laughs) that was wild. I did not expect that. No, you didn't expect the therapist to not be there. Yeah. Did not not expect that. Yeah. And she's seen stuff. And then there was one other, one other thing. Um, uh, anyway, it was it was it was good. It, it uh, you know g- gave enough unexpected stuff. Oh yeah, I was thinking of Nat uh, getting uh, getting uh, uh, stabbed and die- uh, with the needle and dying. Terrible, uh, Nat, Terrible having that legacy. kind of. And now and now it's like and now they almost have to avoid the pattern of on the last episode a main character will die and then right? they'll have yeah. a death moment because Nat kind of had a Jackie moment where she's on the plane with Javi and like her Absolutely. younger self. And, she sure and now did. we have an interesting thing with somebody in the past where we're going to have Nat from the past without anything to tether her to the future. So, you know, it, it's also busting up patterns like that. Like we'd expect all, you know, it makes sense to kill an, an adult member. So it sounds so like, uh, um, blase about it, but it, it makes sense it because th- that's the timeline that has all the danger, right? Like things could definitely happen. Uh, and I did. I liked. Uh, I liked. Oh, Walter! I loved Walter. Oh, same. We love Walter. Love. I worked with uh, Elijah one time on Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, and he was he was cool, man. It was nice to meet him there, and it's a thrill to see him do so well on this show and be like such a great partner for Misty and uh, he was yeah. perfect. He was, he was perfect. I'm hoping there's a Walter flashback and there's a young Walter. I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be great. And we all want more he Walter. was initially supposed to have a one season arc. So we're kind of assuming he's coming back for season three. I don't think he's just going to walk away into the sunset at this point. I think him and Misty are going to be a thing. So 
Fingers crossed. When he yes. runs up and shoots Kevin Tan's, or what does he take? He takes, does he take Tan's gun and just shoots the guy in the takes trunk? Syracuse's gun. Syracuse's gun. And, yeah. and he shoots Kevin Tan in the back. Yeah. Of, yep. In the trunk of the wow. car. Oh, man, that was so funny. <laughs> oh. He wrapped that everything up just that so quickly. So quick. It was Such too quick too quick. I mean, yeah. it, it was again, again, quick. right? An extra episode, and this this brings to mind Game of Thrones to me. I was yes, throny, and like they Same. the last episode, last season was like three episodes, and it's like, ah, eh, here we go. We got to we got to finish should this have up. Went for a whole other season, like, right? They rushed it big time. HBO's like, we need to finish it. It's like. Come on, guys. Uh, so, and show, and the good thing about this too is, is Showtime did a net, did say they, they they've got like five seasons planned, I think. Yeah. This. So, like, they have a plan, and hopefully, I mean, it's a it's a rough TV landscape out there right now. Um, yeah. But this is, you know, it's Emmy nominated again. So, congratulations to the show and to um, you know the casting and to Melanie Linsky for getting nominated as well. It's 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 uh, cool. Obviously, some snubs in there too. I think Major people would like snubs. to see Sophie and Elise yeah. for uh, for her work because that was that was such a crushing episode, and I knew it was going to be like that. I knew it was going to be crushing, and again, there's it, 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 it's uh, the show's so good at like either it subverts the expectations or it gives you what you what you expect, and it's still you're not ready for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the only episode I didn't actually rewatch this season. I just it was so intense. It's I couldn't rough. bring myself back to to watch that again. And who it was it was I was a scene yeah. of her at the end alone where she's like, can't you hear him crying? Yes. Like, and just fades up. Uh, oh, and yeah. looking directly at the camera, breaking that fourth wall, just everything yeah. about the baby stuff was incredible. absolutely crushing. She was so good. Although I did, I did notice her French accent come out sometimes in the episode, but she's really just, just incredible. Um, and yeah. yeah, that was crushing. I was so happy they didn't show the baby in like the bundle Me that they too. had. Cause oh. I'm like, it is that kind of show where like they will be kind of mean like that and show you something like that sometimes. They did the right thing by not showing it. Yeah. They did the two sure. completely the right thing by not yes. showing it. Yeah. Yes. And then another well, snub, Christina Ricci, too. I mean, she should have yeah. she should have gotten that nomination. So among the others as well, but I think that was another big snub for the show. And I would have liked to see more, like more. I, I, you know, I guess our theme here, folks, is more. We just want to see more, more, more. Yeah. Of, um, I would have liked, like to have seen, uh, more Sam uh, Hanratty in, uh, in the past. You know, like so she did have good. some moments with incredible with uh, Crystal Kirsten, but you know, I would have loved to have seen more of that. And, um, you know, it's tricky, right? Like, there's some episodes where I think Nat, you know, uh, young Nat says nothing, and there's some episodes I think young Van says nothing. You know, we only have it's such a big cast, such a big cast. It's so yeah. it'd be so hard to juggle all that stuff. And now, especially with season two, with like that weight of the expectation, like first season had the uh, bonus of like kind of coming out of nowhere and, and, and really cracking us. Like we know it's a showtime show. Like we, we, we get, you know, we know it's going to be a quality piece of television, but like it really, it's just so, so unique or it's such, it's such an amalgam of so many shows. Yeah. Do you have a favorite moment from season two if you had to pick something? Hmm. I don't know. Walter grabbing the gun and shooting Kevin <laughs> Tan in the trunk is very funny. Yeah. Um oh, I'm sure there is. I should have I should have thought of this. Um or even your favorite episode of the season. Something near probably near the near the end, probably like the, the last one or second last episode. Um I liked a lot. Um yeah, it's like even like when the when the girls are all together and they're just drinking the booze and they're like getting up and dancing. Like I always love these moments love in these shows, scene. you know, where yeah. like our, our our poor our poor people finally have a moment of uh, of bliss and joy. You know, yeah. it's like in Game of Thrones, right? Like if someone's like, oh man, you know what? I think everything's gonna be all right. And then I don't know, a dire wolf bites him in the face or something. Like <laughs> I just love that you know when we can have that moment and they see it snowing and it's just like they're so like the most traumatized people you could ever imagine, but they still get to have this great moment of like, oh, yeah, okay. And I liked, um, oh man, uh, uh, um, uh, adult Nat with the fish. Oh, <laughs> at uh, uh, here's your fish. Like it's just so funny. She was yeah. so she was great that that season and. Uh, you know, I hope I hope she was taken out for for story reasons and nothing else. Um, I can't speculate on anything. I know nothing, obviously. But you know, when that happens, yeah, you, you, you do have to wonder sometimes, right? Like, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder why. I wonder why that choice is made. But maybe this, like, we got to take an adult off the board, and it's going to be you. I don't know. 
Right, right. Maybe that was the plan from the beginning. Maybe not. Totally. We'll, we'll never know. I mean, or maybe we will, but we don't know now. So yeah, TBD, I suppose. Um, you were also friends with the dog adoption worker from season two, the one who helped Thaisa adopt Steve. Yeah. Um, any tidbits that you garnered from her at all? Uh, I think I, I, I mentioned on Instagram, you know, I was like, oh, yellow jacket, something, something or other, right? A meme of uh, Cabin Daddy or something. And, and uh, my friend Kari was like, oh, yeah, I'm in uh, season two. Like, oh, that's great. And then, uh, yeah, I'm so thrilled. She's in the, the first episode of the season who gives, who would gives uh, Thais uh, a new dog. Maybe a bad call. I don't know. <laughs> we, it's Stevie, right? Is this Steve? Steve yeah. Steve, yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we, we need an update on Steve, like pronto. Maybe yes, that's what do. the bonus episode is about. Maybe all about Steve. <laughs> Jason Ritter, all about Steve. That goes in the bad, Sandy. Um, but um, I didn't really get any like uh, stories or anything from, from Kari. Uh, I think she enjoyed the experience. It's just her and... Um, uh, yeah, just her and Taisa just for for the day at the thing, and uh, yeah, a funny a funny kind of moment. But months ago, she did tell me that there were uh, some some people. Uh, so we do improv uh, here at a place called the Improv Center in Vancouver. It's probably one of the bigger like improv theaters in the city, and uh, I've been doing an improv there for for years and years. It's just a ton of ton of fun, and. Uh, you know, we often ask for audience volunteers or audience help, or we ask the audience all sorts of things. We ask them for suggestions. Sometimes we get stories from the audience and we recreate it on stage, or sometimes we bring people up. It's like, we want to show you a day in your life. And you get to tell us when we get something right and when we get something wrong. And, and we'll, you know, change the story as we go according to how your life is or how you say your life is. Hmm. And I think they, the question to the audience was, does anyone out there have like a really weird tattoo that they want to talk about? And one girl like was like, I have a tattoo. I have a tattoo. And they brought her on stage and they're like, what's your tattoo? It's like, I have a tattoo of a pig. Oh my uh, gosh. It's Sammy. <laughs> yeah. And it was Sam Hanratty. Uh, and I guess <laughs> she was there. Maybe she went with some friends and, um, yeah, it was up, and I was like, I was, I was angry. I was like, oh, I missed it. I missed oh. seeing Sam Hanratty there um, at the show. But I guess, yeah, she came up on stage and, and helped them out. I, I don't even know what they did, but it was something regarding the thing. And it's, you know, Sammy's uh, uh, very, very nice. Uh, I did see Warren Cole at uh, the Improv Center one time. He was, he was there for the Fringe Festival. He's checking out some plays. I was like, hey man, I was from the Old Jackets too. And he's like, oh yeah. Ah. <laughs> I was like, I was the hunter guy. He's like, oh, all right, cool, man. He's just like, yeah. yeah. Um, he he was super nice, and uh, yeah. So they brought they brought Sammy up on stage for that. So which is funny. We've had a couple of like celebs, I'll say, recently. We had Halle Berry come and see a show. She she wow. shot a she shot a movie here. Uh, I guess like two months ago now. Um, yeah, apparently Halle was at uh, at our show. We had like a '90s themed. Uh, actually, that would have been perfect for the Yellow Jackets. We yeah. had a '90s themed uh, show going for uh, for the month of May that Halle Berry checked out. Um, so I'm not sure if Sammy wow. was there. You know, it was, it was obviously while they were filming. I don't know if she went with any of her her BL Jackets friends. Quite possible. Uh, but yeah, Sammy was uh, up there on stage. Wow, that is yeah. really, really cool. Halle yeah. Berry, that's awesome too. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we love watching your posts about the improv that you do on yeah. Instagram. We enjoy that. So it's Thank nice you. to see you having fun, keeping busy, all that stuff. Oh, it's a blast. I love it. Um, have you ever been recognized by any Yellow Jackets fans just out and about in your daily life? No, because of uh, like, he's so unlike what I look like, I guess, like usually. Yeah, right. and yeah. I've I've been like recognized before. Uh, it's usually by other actors who are like, "Hey, I remember seeing you in the audition room for this or something." But uh, no, it's only online that people are like, "Wait, are you the cabin daddy from Yellow?" Like, I've had some people on like Twitter and on Instagram be like, "Are you the cabin daddy?" And like, yeah, that that, that that's me because like <laughs> he's so, he's so distorted, right? Even when you yeah. see the scene, it's so like right, yeah. like I, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's I fast. don't. It's a quick scene. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I do walk around town looking like that if I'm having a bad day. But usually I, you know, present pretty, you know, either I'm kind of grinning or just kind of flat or got my AirPods in. Uh, so, no, not not a lot of uh, street recognition from that. Okay. 
yeah, it's mostly people like IMDb, the name and like, who the heck is that? I did have like a, a brief, you know, fleeting, like five minutes of fame when that episode came out and podcasts were like, and then this weird guy shows up and we're like, who the heck is that? And he's just uh, an actor in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's like, yeah, he's done a bunch of stuff, but you know, he's just a guy. He's nobody special. Oh, you're special to the well young. thank you you're thank very you. special to all of us we, yes. we sure think so we sure well think so. I, I i do very much appreciate it but yeah if, if they get jason ritter in there and give him some backstory i i would love to see it i would love to see kind of how they explain this and um you know i'd be lying if i didn't say i fantasize that's how like season two would start with like this guy in the woods with his plane and whatever so right we want well, the backstory we- we also thought in the finale when Van starts telling the story in the team timeline that yeah. we were going to get some kind of a backstory then. Yes. Yeah. We did. We heard that finale was going to be 90 minutes and they cut so much out of it. So oh, that really? was probably one of the yeah. things. And you so know, they really again, wanted to go Game of Thrones with it. Those, those, because <laughs> those episodes, I keep bringing up that show. I'm sorry, but like those episodes were like an hour and a half. I think the last yeah. episode was like this or something like that. But yeah. Yeah, they would have crammed a lot, a lot in there in the in the finale, and it's like, yeah, how do you how do you choose, right? Like, how do you choose to just kind of like let's get put it all at the end, or you just like, look, we're already at the end. Who has this kind of t- like? Let's just like say what we got to say and get out. I don't know. I was playing a softball game the other day, and uh, we were up by so many runs that we were going to like change positions and try to make it easy on them. But I said to my buddy, I was like, no, you just stay shortstop. Let's just like get this over with. <laughs> so, like, let's just get three quick outs. <laughs> it's not like a mega athlete. I am not. Um, All right. Well, Hey, but, you're, you're out there playing softball. So that's, that's right. More than I'm doing personally. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you have a, a closer baseball connection than I ever will. Uh, that is also Myers. true. <laughs> yeah. That is also true. Yes. Yeah. That is a fact. Um, do you have any other projects you're working on right now? Any other things upcoming? So uh, at the Improv Center right now, we do have Tall Tales, which is running until August 19th. That is our like, uh, it's kind of like a Princess Diaries-esque format that we're doing. Uh, it, it's kind of like set in a, a semi-fantastical world. It's a lot of fun. We tell this big story over the course of about 90 minutes of uh, some fun improv. Um, and I just wrapped two Hallmark projects uh, that are coming out, I believe, in the fall so hopefully october and then i know the other one comes out in january so the one coming out in october i just wrapped it like two weeks ago uh it's called three bed two bath one ghost uh and it's (laughs) yeah it's uh it's it's fun and uh the other one i i I shot in uh may is uh coming out in january it's called love and jane Okay. Uh, and so it features Jane Austen. So, so for all you Austinites out there, check out Love and Jane on Hallmark. I believe they're coming out with a couple of them in January, January perhaps. Um, so <laughs> check out check out the Hallmark Channel. Then those are the those are the two I got going on, and then okay. presumably nothing else uh, for uh, months and months and months until yeah. uh, everybody runs out of money and the producers uh, force everybody to go back to work again. <laughs> That's right. I make light, but I shouldn't. But like all this stuff is out of, you know, my hands and most of our hands. It's an unprecedented time where we have, you know, more good television than ever. And now nobody wants to make it because they're like, wait a minute, we should get paid more, which makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Right. And as a union person, Hey, we totally stand, you know, with WGA and all that, but does this halt the whole process then? So that means you don't receive any type of casting notices or or anything, or do you still get them so they can have them in the funnel for when things come back? How does that work? So when the writers were on strike, you can still have a script. You just can't like change it. If you're with WGA, those meant those projects I mentioned that shot May and and, and June, those were non-union. So those were outside of the WGA. Right. Uh, but w- while working on one of the projects, uh, the American actor who was there, she was visited by a SAG-AFTRA uh, rep who takes mm-hmm. care of the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> and he visits, he's like, hey, I represent the SAG. You know, it's like, or, the union has your back, you know, whatever. It gives him, uh, gives her his card. And then she's like, yeah, I've never seen that guy before. And I've worked up here for five years. Like, she's never seen this. You know, it's, it, it is what it is. But 
uh, there are, there's also like some Canadian shows that are shooting here right now. So those are outside of the purview of the WGA outside the purview of SAG, because we have our own acting uh, union up here. Uh, even our own acting union in BC, it's UBCP, oh. uh, uh, UBCP ACTRA. So ACTRA is like the Canadian one. And then UBCP is kind of like a specific British Columbia one. So okay. there, there's one Canadian show that's going on right now. Um, I don't think they're going to be making any hallmarks, but I, I don't know. Like during the pandemic as well, they also like made shows just with their Canadian people. They're just like, okay, well, we won't get any Americans for this. We'll just bring the Canadian people up. And for some yeah. of the pandemic things, they were like, well, if it's a couple who ends up together in the rom-com and they got to kiss, let's hire real couples because they're bubbled together. And if they kiss each other, they won't get each other sick, whatever, you know, and have a whole right. thing. So it's very slow right now. I mean, there's still like some commercials and, and some things here and there, but yeah, definitely ex expect it to be slow for the next little while. But thankfully I have my improv. I have other jobs that I do. So I'm extremely fortunate that I have other things that I can do uh, with my time. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but, um, you know, I really hope that, uh, the unions come to an agreement, not soon, but like that they get what they want. Cause this is like a pretty big one when, when both unions yeah. are on strike. I think it's the Huge. first time in like 60 years or something like 63 that. 63 years. Again, wow. completely unprecedented. And like, you think about the landscape of entertainment now and the landscape of entertainment in 1960, it's completely different. That was before any James Bond yeah. movies were made for crying out loud. You know what I mean? Like, ball game. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, we'll see. Unfortunately for our, our hive, that probably means, Oh, well actually no, there's still that bonus episode. So there's yes. There's, Although there's Ashley more. Lyle did say, it seems like there's still either some writing or something that has to be done and well, it will be closer it to season three. So no, it is not dropped. We were kind of speculating that there was still more, to be done with it before it can drop based on how she was talking about it on Twitter. Yeah. So I wonder if Jason, then it's, it's, I wonder if Jason then was, was cut from the last episode of episode of season nine or episode, I'm uh, sorry, last episode, like was cut out of that episode or. Uh, That's what we were thinking. Cause that they're going to repurpose the footage and maybe shoot more. I, I don't know. Yeah. Cause you think they'd shoot like 10. Cause like, you got to get like the crew together. Like it's a big, ask just to get everyone together for one episode unless they're doing some kind of like bear grills thing where they put jason out in the woods with like one cameraman and they just follow him around for you know a week or so as he tries to survive i don't know right it's yeah. real it'd be yeah. pretty cool um yeah and there's a baby involved apparently too so that adds a whole nother layer into it maybe that's sean is yeah maybe that was uh shauna's baby uh you know i don't know i mean he is he is shauna's real life husband so yes, you know there's yes. a connection there yeah. as well. yes I mean, indeed indeed i mean who knows he also just could have been wearing those cool clothes because he looked cool i mean he does, he does look unlike yeah that's a cool he did yeah. like he yeah he's wearing that jacket right yeah, like definitely he, wearing the jacket and he's got yeah. no beard he's got a mustache so. he's got no beard he's got a mustache um so you know I mean, thinking who knows? if it's not cabin daddy it could be cabin daddy's father cabin oh, granddaddy ca perhaps. cabin yeah. daddy daddy oh yeah because yes. i could be the baby uh, yeah oh, maybe wow. you could be jason ritter's son that's cool wow what a yeah, yeah, this is now okay. Now you got me on a whole other plane. Of, uh, <laughs> I mean, anything is, is possible really, with yellow jackets, right? Like truly, truly, you know, it is. They can have Ben's whole apartment show up in the cabin. Uh, <laughs> just you know, anything can happen. No, no, you're absolutely right. Anything can happen. Ghosts will walk, as they say. Yes, yeah. definitely. Well, uh, Cabin Daddy, we've been waiting for you, and we are just so <laughs> glad that you took the time to talk to us. Um, thank you for sharing all your stories, everything, and you know we'll keep in touch, like we have been on Instagram, and see what the future holds. <laughs> but again, like you know, back to what I talked about at the beginning, like a tiny little audition that you just throw out there, and you, you just kind of hope for the best, leads to all of this crazy stuff, right? Like there were people who got like bigger roles in the show had more stuff to do, but, and they still had an impact, but it's just, I'm so fortunate that I got to be this weird thing at this weird time for this specific show. This is such a lightning in the bottle moment, really like yes. who I can't think of too many people who are fortunate enough to, to have, uh, you know, just kind of pop in and do this thing and then still kind of get to exist on this plane. Like, 
maybe I don't want them to explain the backstory so they can still have this hovering over for season three, four and, and five or something. Right. Like, I don't know. Uh, but I, I'm thrilled to be part of the community and uh, yeah, it's, I love the show. And, and, and again, it's going to be a little longer for the next, for the bonus episode and then for the next like season. Yeah. Um, production yeah. takes a while, especially when you're working with two timelines like that. There's that extra layer of uh, production scheduling, which is, you know, having worked in production. Wow. There's a lot of moving parts there. And there's rumors too, that they want to bring it down to LA actually. Um, oh. Which, yeah, I don't know where I'm hearing that from, but I, you know, and I guess they did the, the pilot there, but I always thought Vancouver was like the best place to shoot this show. Cause you have like the urban area and yeah. suburban like you have everything here right that, that's one of the appeals of this place it's yes. got the beaches mountains got the plant it's got whatever um anyway so it'll be a little while i think the young cast will be as old as the adult cast by the time <laughs> that <laughs> is a consideration though the manner in which they're aging and you know with, yeah. with luciano specifically he grew six inches between seasons which was substantial so it's like it's walt in uh in lost he got yes. tall all yeah. of a sudden right <laughs> yeah you get rid of the kid because he got too tall well thankfully they cast all the the high school kids in like their mid-20s right so like they'll yeah, they probably can get away with it yeah they'll, they'll look about i think kevin's almost 30 like the, yes, I don't need to blow up yeah. the spot, older but, than thirty. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he looks fantastic, by the way. Kevin yes, he does. does. He's great um, too. We love him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's great. He's been on your your show. No, he everyone has. on the show is great. I wish him nothing but the best. I wish you two nothing but the best. And uh, Thank I hope you. That you don't have to wait too long to have some more content uh, for your excellent show because uh, I I love it. Well, we appreciate that. And we've actually been very fortunate where we have an official sponsor now, uh, cordcutting.com. So for all of you watching, be sure you bookmark our Hive Hub page at cordcutting.com slash yellowjackets dash hive. And we do have a lot of fun content planned and uh, we're going to have to get our creative juices flowing as time goes on to make sure we're keeping it fresh for everybody. But um, you being here is a big part of that formula. So again, Thank you, and uh, we'll keep in touch. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Will. Bye. Bye. Bye.